Cyclonials, baby. Thanks, guys. You like the new background? I have my save queued up right at... Okay. I want to try this. I think I just did that. I think I, I added a marker so that in the VOD it gives a direct break. Hope that worked. Okay. Cyclonials Chapter 2. It has a detachable. Oh, you're talking about the cord. I'm sorry. Okay. Tell me really quick, like really fast. This background or the kitchen background? I like the kitchen one because it's already there. It's already, it's just doubling up the solid snake picture. I would have to do one of these. All right, guys. I did not watch the VOD for chapter one. I like... Whatever, it's a fever dream. Let's just do it. Interlude one. Like Kentucky Route Zero. It's got chapters and interludes. So... You just killed a cop and dumped his car into the ocean. Nice going, genius. The cold hand of justice will close around your throat soon enough, whatever it is that justice even means these days. Maybe justice is what happens whenever people with power manage to punish whoever was trying to fight back a little for once. Maybe that's why you need a little more power of your own. Enough power to claim justice is what's happening when you're the one settling the score. Or maybe what you need is even simpler than that. Maybe what you need is the power of choice. So what will you do, Jen? You're a fugitive now, and it seems only two choices are available. <laughs> it's green text. <laughs> you can turn yourself in. Or you can run. Run like the wind and hide. Find Abby, dry yourself off, bury yourself in your work, and figure it all out later. Which will it be? Oh, shit. No, we're running. Do you want to see what happens if we surrender? Do you want to see what happens? I mean, obviously the story is built around running. But are you curious? Alright, good call. We'll do a save. Commit? I kind of want to see. I kind of want to. No. <clears throat> How do I do a poll? It is just going to be some joke ending. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. LOL, sorry. I should have mentioned the ability to make meaningful choices in this story can only be unlocked by a true successor. Unfortunately, that's not you. Not quite yet, at least. Don't worry, though. I'll check in again later when you've made a little more headway with this mess you've gotten yourself into. Until then, do whatever comes naturally, I guess. I'm sure it'll all work out. LMAO. They got they actually did get me with that. I I was prepped for a choice. Chapter two of nine. Pranksis. You stand soaked and freezing, alone at the steamboat wharf at night. You just checked Uber and no drivers are currently available, which you could have guessed might be the case at this hour during a pandemic. Maybe you didn't fully think this plan through. No, you shouldn't second guess what you did just because of some momentary sogginess. You review the facts. A nasty cop fired a bullet in an unarmed drunk girl who just crashed into a tree. 
The bullet missed, but traveled directly through her painstakingly written manifesto, which really might as well have been like taking a bullet straight through the heart. What sort of author would you be if you didn't feel this way? So you did what had to be done. You checked the dead cop for a body camera, but he didn't appear to be wearing one. You're not sure if the sleepy NPD even uses those. Well, you thought they were sleepy at least. You guess all police forces in quiet summer colonies seem sleepy until the bullets start flying towards drunk girls armed to the teeth with manifestos. But that squad car surely had a dashboard camera, so you had to do something. What were you going to do? Shoot the gas tank and blow up the car? That probably only works in movies. And the water is right there! You're completely surrounded by this stuff, actually. Now the only evidence linking you to the scene is your wrecked car, registered to your name in the immediate vicinity of a dead cop without a squad car. Okay, that sounds pretty incriminating when you put it that way. You'll have to think about how to handle that. But more importantly, you really need to get out of here. You check Uber one more time. Now it says there's a ride available, six minutes away. That's a relief. It'll give you some time to improvise an alibi. You dial 911 and think about what you're going to say before hitting the dial button. The dispatcher picks up and asks about your emergency. You try to sound calm because it's not a real emergency, not when it comes to the role you're playing right now. You're still cozy and warm in your apartment. You just don't know where your car is. Hey, uh, I need a key if this is a real emergency. I just didn't know where else to call. I'm pretty sure my car was stolen today. The dispatcher goes through the motions, asking for your name and other relevant information. No reason to hold anything back. You want them to know who you are, so they can rule you out when they find the body in the wreck. You then continue weaving your improvised story. Yeah, so I think it might have been my abusive ex-boyfriend. He's been snooping around lately and he has a spare set of keys. The fucker never gave them back to me. The dispatcher asks about him. Damn, you didn't think this far ahead. You continue spinning. Oh, his name? Um, uh, sorry, I don't know if... Uh, I'm pretty scared of him. I'm not sure if I want to be on the record ratting him out. Don't you, like, some witness protection shit I can do? The dispatcher explains that isn't really how that works. But they can send an officer over in the morning so you can file a police report. Oh, wow. No, I don't think, um... You really need to end this call soon before the wheels completely fall off this attempted alibi. Hey, can I text photos to you to 911 or the police? Uh, how do I do that? The dispatcher provides you with a number to text, and you hang up. Your mind races for the right play. You panic and send the most recent photo which comes to mind! That probably was not the best idea. Maybe you should have just hung up after saying you were scared to give his name but you just had to go further with the bullshit. Witness protection program? What the hell was that? Oh well, it's done. It's a small wrinkle in your alibi, but you think you've easily done enough to leave the police feeling confused about what happened tonight. Your Uber's here. Not a moment too soon. You're freezing and exhausted. Somehow, role-playing on the phone with a first responder has been more psychologically draining than exchanging gunfire with one. Whoa, I can't believe you actually came. I've just been watching my phone all night waiting for you to tell me you can't make it after all. Get in here, there's plenty to eat, I made... Z, are you okay? Why are you so wet? You look soaked. Oh, um, yeah, I fell in a puddle on the way over. Oh, you were right, I was too drunk to drive, so I just took an Uber. It's hard to find a ride this time of night. Oh yeah, I bet, so you fell in a puddle and got soaked head to toe? It was a big fucking puddle. Jesus. Why don't you go clean up? You can grab anything from my room to change into something dry. Yeah, dry sounds good. Okay, I'll be right here. I'll heat you up some dinner when you get back. Hell no, oh God, you poor thing. You're having a rough day, aren't you? Don't worry. You made the right call coming over. I'll take care of you. Thanks, Mom. You can't bring yourself to tell her yet. Tonight was too much. 
you just need an evening to unwind without making Abby freak out about your cop murder. You're sure you'll get around to telling her later, if you can think of the right way to break it to her. She's been too good a friend to saddle her with the disastrous karma you can't seem to avoid stockpiling. Or perhaps you aren't stockpiling karma so much as dharma. Or maybe it's some chaotic ju juxtaposition of the two concepts. Maybe you've been key mashing your whole way through life, and only now is your soul reaping the auto-corrected consequences of this haphazard practice. Gotta ditch this. Hmm. You stash it in one of the bottom drawers, underneath some junk. She'll probably never look in here. You guess you could have tossed the gun too, sent it to a watery grave along with the squad car, but now you're technically a fugitive. You trust the future even less than you did at the start of the day. There's no guarantee you won't need this again later. You didn't ask for this shit. Yeah, you guess you shouldn't have been driving drunk, but why should that mean you're suddenly dodging bullets from one of NPD's finest? Whatever, the pig is dead. But you know the matter isn't done with you by a long shot. It'll keep haunting you, unless you start fighting back. This was the gift that Departed Officer gave you tonight. An albatross that'll hang around your neck for the rest of your life. But you suddenly decide not to see it that way. The true gift he gave you was resolve. You're so pissed about it, now you know you're on the right track. Your ambivalence about rebooting your brand is completely gone now. In its place is the same rage and disgust which led you to write your manifesto in the first place. Rage and disgust for injustice, for the systemic evils of this nation, for the weakness and compliance which quell the righteous outrage of its citizens. And now, several years after its completion, there's even more to be mad about. Persecution from the miserable wretches online who canceled you. The ensuing mental breakdown which caused your life to spiral until you ended up on this island. And now, on top of all that, an almost certain shitstorm brewing from law enforcement once they start piecing together what happened tonight. Well, they can do their worst. All the dirtbags out there can have at you soon enough because you won't be hiding for much longer. Your brand is about to get a very serious facelift. And once you step into the spotlight again, from now on, people are going to find it a lot harder to ignore what you have to say. You and Abby have a lot of work to do tomorrow. The next day. Your name is Abby. It's pronounced exactly as it's spelled, so that's made life pretty easy for you. Another thing that's made life pretty easy is the fact that your parents are rich. Rich doesn't really do it justice, though. Most people who vacation on this island for the summer are rich, relative to the average American citizen. Your parents are billionaires. And not the kind that barely qualify. One billion has 10 digits, but they didn't seem content to stop at 10, and society was more than happy to oblige. They own the house you live in, which represents a minuscule rounding error in the grand scheme of their total net worth. Easy to forget about most of the year, and they probably would if you didn't live here year-round. Growing up, you formed memories of this place strictly as a summer home, but after college, you decided to move in here permanently. Mostly because it keeps them out of your hair. It's not the most convenient place to visit, so they never bother until the summer rolls around. And this year, it's looking more and more like the summer as you once understood it, never will. It's roughly 9am, and you have just woken up. Later than yesterday, but that's okay. You were up late last night tending to your beleaguered friend, and even popular influencers need to sleep in sometimes. Your bedroom is tidy, and you always notice if it isn't. You make sure to keep it that way to reflect well on your brand whenever this room is used as a backdrop for your content. Ordinarily, you'd reach for your smartphone first thing in the morning after an extensive routine of cooking breakfast, exercising, and feeding your beautiful horse. But right after all that, you go for your phone to check out the action surrounding your exceedingly well-trafficked accounts. But for whatever reason, today feels a little different. Let me just say, I'm gonna brief aside here. If you had this much money and had this big of a house, and you were an Instagram influencer, you would just use one of the spare bedrooms as like your Instagram bedroom, and you'd never touch it. It would just be like a movie set, right? Like, you don't have to keep your bedroom clean, you just keep your Instagram bedroom clean. 
Anyway, I digress. Yeah, it'd be like a photo studio. You just, you don't even think about it. It's just your secondary bedroom. Instead, you decide to take in the environment. As a thoughtful influencer, you really can't spend too much time tweaking the appearance of the lifestyle you sell to the adoring public. And nothing is left to chance. Your posters are carefully chosen and arranged to broadcast the preferred aesthetic to your crowd. And that aesthetic turns out to be a simple composite of your interests. Which, judging from this wall, appears to be BTS, horses, and, well, that's about it. Your mind is a train that chugs along precisely two narrow rails. You'd almost be embarrassed about the single-mindedness of your enjoyments, but what can you say? You like what you like, and you make no excuses. Your fans are nothing, if not supportive of those twin obsessions. You get a little closer to a hanging graphic depicting your favorite boys. It's hard to resist basking in their glow every now and then. BTS is an extremely popular K-pop group, and you are a vocal member of ARMY which is what the fandom calls itself. You estimate you spend the majority of your waking hours contemplating these seven extraordinarily beautiful boys. Your bio says you're bisexual, but you often like to joke in your posts that you like women as well as exactly seven men, and that's it. I think I am discrediting how genuine influencers are, seeing as I don't, I, I'm not one. You're also an avid Jikook truther, which is to say, you strongly believe Jimin and Jungkook are secretly in love with each other. But you don't consider this a theory or even a particularly well-kept secret. The evidence is overwhelming, and those who refuse to concede to these stone-cold facts are blind, delusional charlatans. You've even written a manifesto on the subject, which, as you've told Z before, is something only crazy people do. But you are the one exception to that rule since when it comes to this subject, you aren't crazy at all. Your eyes are wide open. Your wide open eyes wander to another poster, featuring a number of majestic stallions. What else is there to say on the matter? You just plain fucking love horses. Enough said? Yeah, you think so. Horses kick ass. The end. You meander towards your desk. Mostly cosmetic and hair supplies live here, plus some other silly stuff to keep things fun whenever you stream content, whenever you stream content from this station. Little conversation pieces, things for your fans to notice and comment on. Nothing from any fandom you're particularly interested in per se, but you are mindful of the interests of your followers and you like to throw them little bones here and there. But when you're not streaming, or doing yourself up for shoots, this here is the main reason you find yourself at this desk. You primarily use this laptop to write your fix. Lately, it's all RPF stories dedicated to exploring the alternate universe lives of your seven favorite boys. Many of these fics get pretty racy. None of your fans have the slightest idea this is one of your hobbies. You keep a pretty tight lid on the habit since it's frowned upon in many fandom circles, to say the least. Okay, the truth is, you think you'd get crucified if it got out. But you're not much like Z and don't throw caution to the wind as she has in the past. Your brand is a tight ship. Well except when it comes to effusively sharing your sexual exploits with followers. In that sense, it's quite a loose ship. But when it comes to writing about fiction, there's a whole different can of worms, and heads will probably will understandably roll if the wrong types of online stories are to be associated with your name. That was a long one. Oh, God. There's your horse. His name is David Hasselhoof. Your parents got him for you as a high school graduation present when he was just a wobbly-legged little colt. That makes him almost 10 years old now. When you graduated from Harvard, first thing you did was make plans to transport David to the island where you could reunite with him and tend to him on your own in the summer home. He is by far your favorite family member, the very essence of quiet strength and loyalty. As for the silly name, it came with the horse. You had never even heard of David Hasselhoff before you got him. You assume it's a pop cultural reference that boomers would get worked up about, but the way you saw it, who are you to fault them? Their pop references. God knows you're prone to indulging in the references held dear by you and your peers, so you can't possibly begrudge the elders the same simple joy. Besides, you thought the name was cute. Your phone is buzzing. Who could this be? Oh, it's Z starting a video chat. 
Not out of the ordinary, but quite ridiculous on this context, considering she slept in your house last night. What up? Hey, you're awake. Kinda. Why don't you come downstairs? I'll make you something. Check out this bitch who can't stop feeding me. What did I even do to deserve this bed and breakfast shit? You do realize I suck, right? You've been living a very unhealthy lifestyle. I just want to help you recuperate before you sink back into your den of despair. Mm, I don't know if I'll be going back anytime soon. Your parents' huge bed is super comfy. I must say I enjoy rolling around on its extravagant expanse, getting my stank all over it. I feel like I'm marking my territory. <clears throat> I'm glad you're amusing yourself in there. I pissed in it, actually, to really get the job done. <laughs> no, you didn't. Sure I did. Please tell me you didn't actually pee in my parents' bed. Well, no. Not yet, at least. I do have to pee kind of bad, though. Oh my fucking god, will you get out of there? Come on, we're in the same house. This is dumb. Let's hang out. Tell me all about your big plans. Oh yeah, that shit. I almost forgot why I made the harrowing journey to your manor. Yes, I know. You risked life and limb to get out here and fell in a huge puddle. I'm hanging up now. Come downstairs. How's dicked away I have to suck to get a mimosa around here? Mine. Well, if I must. But if that's how it's gotta be, then your bed and breakfast is about to get a Yelp review for the ages. See, why don't you hold off the booze a while? It isn't even 10 a.m. yet. Here, I'll fix you some orange juice. What? I thought this was brunch. That's how you do brunch, right? Yesterday you were so drunk you were barfing in your macaroni and falling into puddles. Oh yeah. Just slow down. My parents have a wine cellar which you can feel free to raid tonight. Oh, nice. The Yelp review just got a lot better. Good enough to bury the tawdry, dick-sucking lead, at least. <laughs> so, speaking of last night and falling into puddles... What about it? Well, you were completely soaked last night, but I noticed your manuscript was dry. Yeah, um... Okay, so I lost my balance and I could tell I was heading right for that puddle. The huge puddle. Yeah, and I didn't want my thing to get wet, because, like, printing out another one would just be a fucking pain. So as I was falling, I used my quarterback arm and, like, launched it to safety, then splash. Down I go. I see. What? Why is there a hole in it? Oh, that, um, that's a hell of a story. It looks like a bullet hole. Yeah, it is. I shot my own fucking manifesto. Huh? You mean last night? No, no. This was, like, years ago. When I finished the thing, remember my whole mental breakdown? Oh, damn, I mean, yes, you've told me the story, but I guess not all of it? The day I finished that thing coincided almost exactly when all that was going down. Like when my dad died and I dropped out of school and then completely fell apart and said all that crazy shit online, I also finished my manifesto and I guess I uh, shot it due to going nuts. Jesus. <clears throat> Who is that on her shirt? Let me know. I'm going to keep going. Well, you're the only one who tells me only crazy people write manifestos. Is it really that surprising I'd pop a cap in my own magnum opus? Is it actually, Beck? I guess not. I have to admit I feel kind of crazy maintaining my own manifesto, but I don't think I'd ever shoot it. That just means you can't be all that passionate about it. Oh, excuse me, but that is... Bullshit. I mean, every word of it with all my heart. You should read it. Abs, I'm not reading your manifesto, sorted K-pop manifesto. Oh, why not? I'm trying to understand your stuff and help you with it. Because you don't need to sell me on anything. If you say that your boys Jim Cook are fucking each other, then I believe you. But there's so much to it. Yeah, and I believe it. Just let those boys be in love, you know? Good for them. I don't need it proven through your painstaking academic rigors. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Meanwhile, unlike you, I am intellectually curious enough to delve into another woman's delirious manifesto. Are you read it? A few pages. That is what little I could glean around the gaping bullet hole. <laughs> so what did you think? It's... Well, it's unsurprisingly quite intense. I'd expect nothing less. It's also very, um... What? Clown-heavy? 
Yeah, it's all about clowns. Wasn't this all just inspired by your juggalo phase? I don't know about all that. There are a lot of inspirational forces that went into this. Mostly all this shit came from me in a series of increasingly psychotic dreams in the run up to my mental breakdown. That's pretty hardcore, and now you want this to turn whatever this is into your new brand? Yup, I'm fully committed to it now on a fucking mission. Well, cool, I mean, I remember you talking about it before, but it was always in the vague context of some crazy thing you wrote, not something you actually wanted to do something with, so if I'm going to help you out, maybe you can explain it to me a little more? Mostly, it's just a bunch of revolutionary rhetoric about how America and capitalism sucks and should be destroyed. Naturally. But the socialist rhetoric is repackaged to be, like, super clowny. Well, who doesn't love a nice clown? Fuck me nobody. So that's it. Lots of radical left-wing philosophy, plus, like, everyone gets to be a clown? Basically, but there's, like, a lot more to it. There's also tons of lore. Lore? Yeah, that's what my feverish dreams provided mostly. It's so much shit. I talk about where these ideas came from. The Jubilites originated on the planet Whimsive. Oh, a planet? So Jubilites are alien clowns? Give me a sec. Give me a sec. <clears throat> yeah, well they were. Their civilization died millions of years ago, and their founder has been communicating to me through dreams. Not literally, I mean, I know they're just dreams, but that's what the lore says. Whimsi whimsify. That's how it's pronounced. But it's spelled W-H-I-M-S-I-P-H-A-E. Whimsify. Well, <laughs> cool. I don't... I didn't know it was this deep. I guess this was a whole creative writing project then, not just a crazy manifesto. I don't know, it's still crazy as fuck, but yeah, it runs very deep. I think with my new brand, I'll just release the whole thing sequentially, like in little bits, a few pages at a time. Okay, so where do we start? Well, obviously, the first thing I'm gonna need is a new clown sona. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, clowns are fun as shit. That's the whole point of them. <laughs> That's how I envision rebooting my brand. I just want to start the fuck over. Then I come up with my clown sona and I'm like, hey, this is the new me, I'm a fucking clown. And I do a bunch of photo shoots and that's my starting content. Once I establish myself that way, then I start rolling out the serialized manifesto content, like start pitching to people and see if I can drag more enthusiastic new clowns into my tent. This sounds great. I can help you come up with a clown sona. Maybe later I can make one too. Oh, I'd expect nothing less. You'd make such a lovely jubilate. Wow, flattery will get you everywhere. It better, bitch. <laughs> well, how about after breakfast we head up to my vanity mirror? We can give you a whole clown glow-up. A clown-up? I, I messed that line up. We can give you a whole glow-up. A clown-up? Hell yeah. Okay, I'll start saying lol out loud. What would you prefer, LOL or LOL? Raffle? Lamau? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. LOL? This needs to be better than my old Juggalo clown Sona. What did that look like? Do you have any photos? Probably, but it just looked like some edgy teen piss. You don't need to see that shit. It will contaminate your results. Didn't you also cosplay a long time ago? You should be an old hand at this. Maybe you don't even need my help. Yes, I did when I was a kid, but you don't have near the amount of green makeup it would take to duplicate those results. Huh? Never mind, we won't be speaking of that. I just want to make some cool clown shit happen here. I think I want to do something with Z's. Z's? Like my name? Oh yeah, hmm. Here, let me try something. Oh, actually this is fucking sick. You like it? Yes I do. Apps for a ridiculous bimbo. You can be a genius sometimes. I mean, I did graduate from Harvard, you know. Yeah, by fucking all the professors, right? Well, yes, but isn't that what a genius would do? Yeah, I rest my case. Here, let me mess with this look some more. Oh, 
look at you. This is so cute. It's not supposed to be cute, though. It's supposed to be badass. Well, it's that, too, but mostly it's cute because I know who's underneath. OMG. What? Yeah, you can't. Maybe my clown son is working too well. You're already hitting on me. LMAO! But I always do that. I know, but now I've added clown pheromones to the equation. Could be dangerous. Hmm, perhaps so. Is that it? You think you're done? With the face, yeah, but obviously I need some new ensembles. None of your clothes are going to cut it because you're an absurd giant, and I don't want to go back to my place anytime soon because, well, I just don't. We could always go shopping this week. More places are open for business than you would think. Yeah? What about a name? What? Doesn't your clown Sona need a clowny name? Um, no, I think I'll just keep my name. Since it's already a name I gave myself to replace my parent give it name, I'll rebrand and all that, but I won't be name hopping like a fool. I guess that makes sense. Some old haters will link my new brand with my controversial past, but I don't even really care at this point. They can take their best shot, but I'm not running anymore. Am I allowed to make up a clowny name when I make up a clown Sona? Of course. That is strongly encouraged for all of those who choose to clown up. Oh, I know what I'll go with. My old screen name when I was a kid, Apple Pie. Oh, I see. Well, now who's the one being fucking cute? Um, I guess it was me when I was ten years old and playing Neopets, but also it's still you and your cute clown makeup. You're right. It's a shame to waste all this clowny cuteness on my gay mother who would think I was cute even if I took a shit right on her bedroom floor. Wow. So why don't we take this new brand for a spin and see what people think? But you don't even have any new fits yet. Whatever, I'll just take a headshot selfie. You want in on this? <laughs> LOL, okay. It's weird. I don't think Abby's saying LOL. I don't think Abby's saying lol. At least my Abby. <laughs> my Z can say lol. And lamau. And raffle. Like, I, I hear you. But when I read this line again, it's like, LOL, okay. I, I just, I, it doesn't feel right. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right. You clear out your Instagram account, deleting the photos from your stale brand and posting the inaugural selfie showing off your new clown Sona. Abby cross posts the same photo to her account and tags you in it. No going back now. The new brand has officially launched. The day slips by as you monitor the comments and feedbacks on your humble starter post. The reception to your clown photo, clown Sona is almost universally positive. You can't tell if it's real praise or if Abby's followers are just being polite to her friend who's obviously a charity case and just got into a nice pity shout out. It doesn't matter though, because at the end of the day, clout is clout and you have to start somewhere. You already have 10,000 new followers, which seems like an absurdly high number to you. But when you consider you're just siphoning off some of Abby's following of 3 million, it's just a tiny drop in the bucket. Still, it's a strong start for only having posted a single clown selfie, and now it's up for your, to your showmanship to build on it. Still clowned up, huh? Yeah, I'm living in the paint for a while, trying to get into character. There's a character? I thought your clown Sona was just you. Well, it is. The Jubilate Manifesto says your clown Sona is an expression of your truest self, like a final form. Sounds like some anime shit. It's totally some anime shit. Well, it sure seems like people are enjoying your clown Sona. I think they're just being polite for now. It's all a bit patronizing. Your followers just like whatever you do. So of course they're going to be nice to your weird clown friend. Well, see how they really feel once I start rolling out my actual content. I'm really curious to see where it goes. I'll just keep giving you shoutouts until we get your brand to take flight. I can't believe what a chicken shit I was being about following you. This could be fun. The losers who'd have a problem with me supporting you aren't even worth any consideration anyway. Yeah, basically, but... Besides, nobody said anything yet. Maybe because nobody has connected me with my previously problematic identity yet? 
I suppose that is one advantage, advantage to clowning up. You keep the old haters guessing. The haters will probably catch on soon enough, and then we'll see what consequences that will have. I just don't give a fuck anymore, and I hope they show themselves makes it easier for me to keep an eye on them. Yeah, whatever. Life is too short to worry about the opinions of shitty people ref how the opinions of shitty people reflect on your reputation. We're just going to have some fun here. Speaking of which, looks like you found the wine cellar. Oh yeah, I strongly recommend the um, 2016 Domain George's Rumier Missigny. Excellent vintage. Uh, if you say so, I don't actually know anything about wine. Neither do I, I just looked in the cellar and checked prices online. This was the most expensive shit I could find, it goes for $17,000 a bottle. Really? The internet says so, yeah. I had no idea my parents had such pricey stuff down there, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Don't they also have a bunch of fucking Bentleys in the garage? There's one Bentley, and a few other cars, but yeah, they spend this money on a lot of stupid things. Maybe we should have saved this super expensive wine for a special occasion, though. Batch. It is a special occasion. Just a couple of friends hanging out for the first time in forever, clowning up and making plans to cause problems on purpose. <laughs> You're right. If this doesn't count as a $17,000 night, then I don't know what does. Cheers. Let this mark the beginning of a long and fruitful endeavor to exploit the living shit out of your parents and their obscene horde of ill-gotten wealth. I'll certainly drink to that. What else did you have in mind? Give me some time to build a brand first, and I'll let you know what's up. It's all related, you'll see. The suspense is killing me. I hope you're prepared to bring this new level of showmanship to your new brand and not waste it all on me. You don't need to worry about that. You just keep supplying me with fresh new simps, and I'll play the role of a ringmaster. Yeah, she murdered someone on accident. <laughs> Imagine Z causing a problem on purpose and what that looks like. <laughs> My throat is killing me today. I'm not gonna lie. This is gonna be rough for the next, what, seven weeks, eight weeks? Who's calling? Oh, nobody. Because Abby's, like, the voice of reason. Abby's just my voice, like, pitched a little up. Yeah, thank you. It's it's my voice pitched up a little bit. Yeah, you're right. I have to, I have to channel. Just some fucking spam. One week later. After seven days and nights of being supplied with a steady diet of fresh new simps due to Abby's enthusiastic hype, combined with your newfound flair for social media ringmastering, your Instagram following has ballooned to a figure you can barely comprehend. Just over half a million new subscribers. Z, she, they, Jubilate, Nantucket, Massachusetts. This total was unfathomably, unfathomable to you at one point, but you have to keep reminding yourself this is a modest fraction of Abby's total fandom. They count as your fans too now, only by the promotion she generously provided. The true test comes as soon as you begin to flex your vision in front of a sizable starting crowd. You've begun releasing the introductory portions of your manifesto, which have been met with a largely positive reception, if somewhat confused as well. While your new fans appear to be humoring your dogmatic content, they mainly seem to be here for the novelty of your clowny e-girl stuff. You're rolling in more simps than you know what to do with. An almost limitless reservoir of thirsty boys who appear to be at your disposal for just about anything. Of course, they're mostly all the same eager simps who have been hounding after Abby for years, who seems more than willing to migrate to a greener, clownier pasture. And of course, as expected, a few old antis have begun to surface as well, and they brought receipts. You knew they would. 
you simply delete some of the comments containing links to your previously problematic behavior, block, and move on. Their negativ negativity is overwhelmingly drowned out by other more positive comments regardless. An absolutely disgusting person. If you stand this problematic piece of garbage, just unfollow me now. Dude, that Gerald! That Gerald's been there since before 1k. I don't remember if PickleRick.Fart was one of the OGs. This is a relief to see, and it helps you rise above the hate. But you don't rise above it before you take note of every single hater and anti who smears you in your comment section and elsewhere. You make sure to maintain a thorough list of every nasty piece of shit before you block, move on, and benevolently rise above the noise. They are nothing to you now except motivation. Alright, let's let's read through these. Candace Schmandis, PickleRick.Fart, Eric B0452, N B Garfield, Steph P9089, The Cetrakini, Horny for Bojack, Softboy Makara, Lol What Wendy10203, PickleRick.shit, PickleRick.balls. Motivation to prove them wrong and make them deeply sorry it ever even occurred to them to post unkind words about such a cute and creative clown girl with a sensational new brand. Your sharp rise on the coattails of your famous friend has all been good fun to monitor, but the fact is, you've barely be even begun revealing the good shit. And before you share that stuff with your new fandom, you'll need to make sure Abby is up to speed on the next phase of the campaign. Abby, we need to talk about Pranksis. Oh, lol, what? Pranksis. It's the first critical piece of Jubilate Doctrine I'll be unveiling soon, but you need to know about it first, and much more importantly, you need to practice it. I do? Why? Because pretty soon this movement is going to need money, and I mean an absolute fuck ton of money. As generous as you have been with your credit cards helping me buy new clothes and shit, that level of financing isn't really going to cut it. But one of my credit cards has a million dollar limit! Wow, a whole million dollars, that's cute. Cute? Z, you drive a fucking Kia. And yet I'm the one with an exceptionally refined palate for expensive wine. And I also know a million dollars is a bullshit chicken feed number, you need to start thinking bigger. Maybe you should try to relax. Your account is off to such a good start. Between the two of our accounts, we could really pull together some really good revenue streams. If you start stressing out about how it's all chicken feed money or whatever, you won't have any fun. Wasn't that the point of all this, to have fun? Abby, you still don't understand. Pranksis is the very essence of having fun. And the more money you make, the more it multiplies the fun you're having. Okay, I'm sure that's true and all, but that's one of the points I've been trying to make to my parents. I've already been doing some serious numbers. I know I half-assed my business degree, but I've actually been able to translate my following into a pretty profitable situation while having a good time doing it, so my parents could both go eat shit about my bad career choices. Yeah, on the topic of your parents, that's what this is about. I thought it was supposed to be about Pranksis. It's also about Pranksis. Well, what the fuck is Pranksis? Pranksis is fucking everything. A mission critical plank in the Jubilate platform. A central pillar, actually. It's what most of my manifesto's sanctioned clownery revolves around. It also happens to be the key to how I start bankrolling the fuck out of this jam. Alright, genius. So, what is it? Well, you know what a prank is? Yeah. You know what Praxis is? No. Lol. Okay, forget about it then. It actually doesn't matter for the time being. Let's talk about your parents. If you help me out with this, then that'll be the first real life lesson in pranks us. When's the last time you talked to them? Oh, uh, a couple of days ago, actually. They rarely call, but they do keep an eye on my accounts. And I guess they noticed I've been doing something different lately, lol. They sure do hate on your crazy socialist diatribes. <laughs> But I also have them believing that this is all just an act to own the libs or whatever. Like, good for ratings and all, but down the road we're just gonna fuck with people about it, turn it into a racket or something. 
It's just easier to deal with them if I tell them things like that. They think it's a good idea in theory, but wow, you sure do rile them up. This is all incredibly good, actually. Abby, you didn't even know it, but you're quite naturally gifted with the art of pranksis already. I am? Yeah, this is the perfect table setting. Cramping the marks and all. So I don't even think about how much, too much explaining to do here. I just need you to call them again soon. I already typed a bunch of notes for you to hit in your conversation. Huh, <laughs> okay. I, I, this voice is killing me, guys. I gotta be honest. <clears throat> By now you've become considerably more familiar with the finances of Abby's family. Over the past week, you've pieced together a more complete picture through questioning Abby and a few other methods of research. Their political activity was some of the easiest stuff to find. Over the last four years, they've been steadily making huge donations to the Trump campaign. But more recently, it looks like they switched to becoming heavy Biden donors. You're sure it's not for any ideological reasons, but likely due to the entire Trump charade looking more and more like a sinking ship all the time, especially in light of the pandemic response and its economic fallout. You can tell this move must have been a bitter pill for her dad to swallow, and while he is kind of a dumbass, he's not so stupid as to let a perfectly hollow, easily corruptible president waltz into office without taking a whole bunch of his money first. <clears throat> the truth is, in the man's heart of hearts, you doubt he really gives a shit which senile rapist gets to run the show, as long as he gets to take photos with him at $50,000 per plate fundraising dinners. And if you take a closer look at the companies which they own a lot of shares in, it becomes pretty obvious which economic disruption, disruption has hit them pretty hard. Wild swings in their total net worth to the tune of billions. Their money people must have been moving the assets around like crazy to protect what's left. It's hard to pin down their total net worth given the complexity of the holdings, but your recent estimates have it somewhere between 20 and 30 billion dollars. But probably not for long, depending on the economy of course, as well as what you and Abby can manage to put into motion with your revolutionary new philosophy known as Pranksis. Oh man. I do need to get like throat coat tea. Because this is rough stuff. So I just had a pretty long talk with them. They were really surprised I called, but happy to hear from me. <laughs> I never call out of the blue like that. That's good. What happened? I just went through everything you listed for me, but naturally, you know, which meant I had to talk for a long time, just bullshitting my way with small talk. So it didn't seem suspicious. That's great. See, I told you, you barely need any coaching at all. Uh, let me, oh, come on, Z. You see, you're making me overthink it now, man. Like, what are they? LMAO, come on, Z. It doesn't, it's weird. It's, it's typed out like they're typing, but they're not typing, they're speaking. Why are you so surprised I'm good at working my parents? I've been bamboozling these people my whole life. Haha, <laughs> I bet. Come on. I finally got around to bringing up the Bitcoin stuff again. Actually, it was really smooth because I already brought it up. What, like a year ago? Remember that? Yeah, because I told you to. I know. Have you really been planning this for that long? At the time, I thought you were just having me do it as a goof. It was a goof, but it also served the double purpose of laying the groundwork in case we ever wanted to finally make all this stuff happen. That's how you have to look at it. Think long term and just make the most of future opportunities as they present themselves, or create those opportunities like we're doing now. Yeah, so I started babbling about Bitcoin shit again, per your notes, but I still feel like I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about when you get into it. I know you don't. It's good you sound a little confused about it, because you are. You're not supposed to be an expert. This is just stuff you've been reading up on a little. All you're doing is priming them. Right. So, are you really going to hack all my parents' money? Like, that wasn't just more of your outrageous bullshit all the time? Abby. This is what hacking is. It's like 90% social engineering. 
You need to be patient, plant all the seeds along the way, set up points of psychological leverage, and when the time is right, you have like a little bit of low end programming ready to go. This is all a lot easier than it sounds. It is? Yeah. I've been doing a bunch of stuff already. LOL, I bet you have. Over the last week, I've been micro-targeting your parents on Facebook with ads for Bitcoin shit. Oh my god. For the service I want them to be using, of course, it's a real service. Deals in high-volume crypto transactions. The point is we get them to do real shit first, then get tricky with it a little later. Okay. I've also been emailing them shit that looks legit enough, kind of bombarding them with info, offhand testimony from trusted people, other rich fucks spooked about the economy, and now you're one of the human lovers too. When the time comes, you're the one who pushes them to make the final move. Who are the trusted people? I mean, they're fake. It's all just me. I started a few fake chain emails. You know, the ones boomers love to respond to and forward around. It's like catnip, they can't fucking help themselves. Put a ton of crap email addresses in the recipient field, including a bunch from people I know they're acquaintances with. Nobody too close, but the names of other rich people they'd recognize and listen to if they saw them babbling about crypto as a way to protect their billions in a dumb email chain. Wow. I actually did this on a whim. Being spectacle of the returns, but it's working phenomenally. I got your mom to reply to one of those chains a few times credulously. I worked her a little bit with one of the sock puppets, some other rich dude she's met. It's so easy to get these names. The Republican donor lists are kind of like a gold mine. Wait, you've been talking to my mom? Sure, why not? That isn't even the good part. Hmm? After I got her interested enough in the subject, I had this dude kind of pull her aside. I deleted all the names from the chain and just worked her one-on-one. -on -one. It got pretty flirty. Turns out your mom's a real saucy bitch. What? Bottom line is she's sort of having an affair now. Sorry, Abs, your mom's getting a lot more side action from me than you could ever manage. Oh my god! Please don't be jealous. It's just some undercover spy work like some James Bond shit. This breathtakingly horny Karen means nothing to me, I promise. I'm losing my mind? Well, if I knew you'd be this hot and bothered by it, I would've just blind copied you all the emails. I mean, I still could. Uh, uh, see, you, you, I don't even, you're unbelievable. How do you think about that shit like this? Cool your jets, Abby. I already said what's going on. It's just a little bit of playful prank, sis, that's all. Not even that far along in the process, really. It's only phase one. Phase one? Yeah. I'm just setting them up. At the right moment, you, a trusted and beloved daughter who's famous and influential, will knock them down. Okay, I believe you, but how do I do that? Fine. I'll just walk you through the play. The thing to do now is wait for the right opportunity. Everybody is already spooked about the economy, so we pick our spot, and when we do, we exploit their fears over more huge stock market losses to swoop in with the Bitcoin shit. And I work my angles too like your mom. My email chain Romeo says he just shifted most of his assets to crypto to ride this out. Whereas you're coming at it like an heiress. Just say you're trying to do your part to protect the family fortune. You push the same exchange site I've been pushing with my micro-targeting. So I get them to buy tons of bitcoins. And then you hack the coins? LOL, no. Lol. Lol. No. There's no hacking involved, just stealing. The exchange service really exists. It's a real way to buy coins, and you put them all in a wallet. Their financial people will agree that this is a sound way to do it. It's solid and vetted. I don't expect them to do anything their money guys wouldn't sign off on. We just step into the middle of the process, the part where your dad stores his shit in the digital wallet. I designed a spoof wallet site that looks and functions exactly like the ones on the real site. Similar URL. Even ask for a password first. Do you have his password? Lol, no! Don't you see yet? These are all mind games. You can enter any shit in the login fields and it works fine. But he will enter his real name and password, at which point the game's over. Once I have that, I can do almost anything. I can't keep this up, guys. I really... I... this is killing me. 
you can hear it. You can hear my voice getting more frail. I don't have the the grit to Z anymore. <clears throat> but it doesn't even need to stop there. He could even just go right ahead feeling confident, secure site because it's just accepted as password, and then he stores the coin data directly into my fake ass wallet, at which point he has just fucking handed the coins right over to me. It's basic phishing shit. Usually people are more on guard for things like this, but not if trusted family members are sending them links being like, Cool, you're almost there, dad. Now open the wallet. Here's a link to that. Yeah, I see. And once the coins are ours, that's it. Their money's gone. I resell them, move the money around a bit, stash it in offshore accounts. My guess is if we pull it off, it would be a long time before you even realized it was gone. And if that happens, I decay. Just blame the hackers or whatever. Well, the hackers did take it. Exactly. So how much are we going for here? Like all their money? Uh, probably not. No way anyone's pushing through a 20 or 30 billion Bitcoin transaction, and their money people would probably shit bricks if this was proposed. But you hype them up for as much as possible. Whatever their guys can agree to is sound diversification policy. Okay, uh, Z, what are we even going to do with all this money? I have some ideas. Oh boy, well, I can't wait to find out what they are. Huh? Who could that be? Jake, that comedic timing. I just can't believe the murder is never going to come up again, right as the murder comes up again. That's it. 30 unexciting chapter 2. Thoroughly unexciting. <sighs> to be continued.